Hi, church family. This is Jeff. I know I probably look a little scruffy, but that's because I'm trying to grow a COVID beard. It's a little difficult for me to do that normally, but I'm hoping I can during the time we're off. Anyway, I want to let you know about a couple of things. One is we're still trying to do ministry here at the church. On Mondays and Thursdays right now, we're doing, uh, we're doing cake-out meals for Good News Cafe. We're doing that from 10 to 12 both on Monday and Thursday. That coincides with when the school is also handing out their meals. Um, I also want to let you know that tonight at 6 p.m., uh, Pastor Danny is going to do a special uh, live stream of a Palm Sunday Lord's Supper with he and his family. And so we hope that you'll uh, tune in to that tonight at 6 p.m. That'll be really great. Uh, we are trying to cut costs here at the church, and as a result of that, we have uh, let our mowing service go. And so as you saw maybe in Pastor Danny's update this week, if you're somebody who could help with that, if you'll give me a call um, and we can try to set up a time when you could help us to mow our church lawn. Um, this coming week as we head into the Easter Sunday, uh, we are going to have a special tenebrae service, uh, kind of some instructions that you can do at home. And those will be available on the website. Um, finally, I want to let you know we are praying for you. Uh, I know that you're praying for us and you're praying for each other. But I want to let you know on our website we do have a special prayer page. You can go there and you can see the prayer list. Uh, you need to get a password and you can call the church office for that. But also, there's a place where you can put special requests that you have. We want to know about those and be able to keep in touch with each other. We love you and we are praying for you. We hope you have a great week. Well, good morning, church family. It is Palm Sunday. It is so good to be with you today on this beautiful Sunday morning. I want to begin with a passage of scripture from Matthew chapter 21 that talks about the triumphal entry of Jesus. If you have your Bible with you, turn to Matthew chapter 21 verse 1. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me, and if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. And this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on him, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road, Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Let's sing today. Hosanna. Hearts returning to 
When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Washed away, washed away. church family. We definitely are waving our palm branches this morning. So excited to see our children involve themselves in celebrating the coming Messiah on this Palm Sunday. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you for being a part of being a part of the church. And as, I, as we say every single week, that we cannot be separated, that God has, has, he has bonded us together as the people of God And we're so thankful that from your living room, from wherever you are this morning, that you're worshiping with us, the family, First Baptist Church, Corsicana. Would you bow your head this morning and let's pray together. Father, thank you that there is strength in the name of the Lord. Thank you that there is power in the name of the Lord. And thank you, Lord Jesus, in this season of our lives that there is great hope in the name of the Lord. We love you with all of our hearts. We give you praise today. We ask, Lord, that you would lift our heads, that you would encourage us. Father, that you would be with our our community. Lord, there is significant fear that's beginning to come upon people, and I pray that you would give confidence. Father, there are many people who are wondering about jobs and work and income, and I pray that you would be our provider. Lord, we give you this time We give you our lives, and we ask that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord in song.
have a great medley of songs. Oh, praise the name. The blood will never lose its power. And glorious day. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise. Praise His name for. 
great song that is a familiar hymn text that is set to a modern tune and I know you know these lyrics I've heard uh, groups like Casting Crown sing this song uh, but we want to lift this today it tells the story beginning with Christ's birth and uh, going all the way through the resurrection into the, resur the resurrection the crucifixion so let's uh, let's join our hearts in song today as we sing this great song. One day when heaven was filled with His praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin. Dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us. His glory revealed. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me. Living, He loved me, dying, He saved me, buried, He carried my sins far away, rising he justified, freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glory. 
glorious day. Oh, glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone My Lord evermore Death could not hold him The grave could not keep him From rising again Living he loved me Dying he saved me Buried he carried My sins far away Rising he justified One day is coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day, glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming, one day the skies will far away, rising he justified, freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glorious day, living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. God bless you, church family, and thank you again, Steve, for leading us today. Um, what an amazing thing God is doing in our church. I'm so thankful again that you're worshiping with us. I didn't say this earlier, but if you're not a member of our church, thank you for tuning in with us. And when all this is said and done, I want you to know that we would love to have you come be a part of the First Baptist family. Um, we continue to be in a very serious time of life and history. And yet, every single week, I've tried to give you a reason to smile, and the memes just keep coming in. Uh, Monty Trimble has been a blessing this week. He sent me several. I want you to look at this one. Um, coming this summer to a yard sale near you. <laughs> um, we definitely know that there is going to be a massive garage sale all across this community at the end of this as people have been forced to clean out closets and, and just find things to do. And then once again, let me give some praise to Clay Brock. Um, with this amazing meme, Grandpa, what did you do during the great coronavirus panic of 2020? Well, son, I had a very dangerous job. I was a tail gunner on a Charmin delivery truck. <laughs> um, there are reasons to smile, and I hope that you're finding those reasons. Um, we have great joy that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. When you come to a Sunday like this, though, church family, in the annual year of the church, you automatically know that you're on the threshold of remembering the greatest walk of faith the world has ever known, Palm Sunday. And so as we launch this message today, I want to remind you of all that happened, the chronology of it all. And, and, and as we walk through those lists of things that happened to Christ in the Holy Week, let's remember these, that Jesus entered into Jerusalem, the people laid down palm branches. They said, blessed is he who comes 
in the name of the Lord. Let's remember that Jesus was anointed in the town of Bethany by the woman. Let's remember that Jesus gathered with his disciples at the Passover meal. We know that as the Last Supper. Let's remember that he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Let's remember that he was arrested there, that he stood before the Sanhedrin, that the, he was sentenced to death. The soldiers beat him. They mocked him. And let's not forget that Jesus ultimately hangs on a cross. Now that's a quick review of the passion of the Christ. But in the midst of that narrative, what I want to connect us with are the characters, the people that we find in the narrative story. There's Simon the Cyrene who was pulled from the crowd to carry the cross of Jesus. There was Pilate who ultimately washed his hands of Jesus' blood. There was Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Caiaphas, the high priest who questioned Jesus the Christ. The mob who cried out, crucify, crucify. Peter, James, and John who couldn't even stay awake while Jesus prayed. And then there were the women. So many women, the Bible says, followed at a distance. But there are two characters that we cannot forget about today. And this sermon is going to focus on these two. The criminals that were on each side of Jesus on the cross. Today, church, let's remember that Jesus hung on Golgotha's hill, but he was not there alone. There was a thief on his left, and there was a thief on his right. I want you to take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to Luke chapter 23. And before you, we begin reading that, let me connect with you several things. We find ourselves today in this ongoing sermon series, Cast of Characters, and, and you know that I've been leading us to remember again and again how many people God chose to use. I, I've said this was our tag, common people in the hands of an uncommon God. We've talked about um, the Lord using Matthew the tax collector. We've talked about God using Nicodemus. We've talked about Abigail and Caleb and, and then Shifra and Pua two weeks ago. But now today, we're going to focus on those two criminals on the cross. So let's read the text together. Luke chapter 23, beginning in verse 39. It says, One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Now so far in this study on the cast of characters, every single time I've focused on whom God used convincing us that God can use you, he can use me, he can use anyone. But as we enter into this study on the two criminals on the cross, all of a sudden our study changes. Because today I want to talk to you about the greatest gift that God might give us. He talk, I want to talk to you about the value of choice. The most important gift that God gives to you and me is the value of choice. And to get into this, I want to tell you a story. The story is about a man named Edwin Thomas. Edwin was a master of the stage. At the end of the 1800s, he established himself as the premier Shakespearean actor in the world. He performed Richard III at the age of 15. In New York City, he performed Hamlet almost 100 consecutive nights. He wowed critics on both sides of the Atlantic, but Edwin not only knew tragedy on the stage, but he also knew tragedy in his own life. You see, Edwin had a brother whose name was John, and John was also an actor. He never achieved the status of his older brother, but his name was so much more famous. You see, the reason was because his brother John took the role of an assassin in Ford's theater. On a night in 1865, he, he stole into Ford's theater, and he fired a bullet into President Abraham Lincoln. Now, now, let me connect you the dots for you. The last name of both of those brothers was Booth. Edwin Thomas Booth and John Wilkes Booth. Edwin was never the same after that night. His brother did that. 
His shame forced him to leave the stage. And then one day, many years later, he was in a train station in New Jersey. And that day, this well-dressed young man pressed through the crowd, and he lost his footing. He fell between the platform and the moving train, and instantly Edwin risked his own life to save that young man. He hung over the railing, and he pulled the young man to safety. He immediately recognized Edwin, though, and several weeks later, Edwin received a thank you letter. That letter came from General Adams Boudot, who served as the secretary to General Ulysses S. Grant. That letter thanked Edwin Booth for saving the son of an American hero. Catch this. That American hero was Abraham Lincoln. Edwin Booth had saved the life of Robert Todd Lincoln. Isn't that ironic? One brother killed the president, and the other brother saved the president's son. It's amazing. They were brothers. They were from the same father. They were from the same mother. They had the same profession. They had the same passion. And one chose life, but the other chose death. Now, How does that happen? How in the world does, does that happen? It doesn't make sense, but, but I want to tell you today, it's more common than you think. That's not unique. You see, in the Bible, we see similar stories all the time. Cain and Abel were both the sons of Adam, but Abel chooses God, and Cain chooses murder, and God lets him. Abraham and Lot were both pilgrims in Israel. Abraham chooses God, and Lot chooses Sodom, and God lets him. David and Saul were both kings of Israel. David chooses God, and Saul chooses power, and God lets him. Peter and Judas both denied their Lord, but Peter sought mercy and Judas sought death and God lets him. Here's what I want to tell you. In every age, in every page of scripture, the same thing is revealed again and again. God allows you and me to make our own choices. Edwin Thomas Booth was allowed to make his choice. John Wilkes Booth was allowed to make his choice. And that's exactly what Jesus taught at every turn. Jesus said that, that you can choose a narrow road or a wide road. Build on the rock or build on the sand. Serve God or serve your riches. Choose the Bible's teachings or choose your own prerogative. You can choose, the Bible says, to be a sheep or a goat. God gives eternal choices, and those choices, they have eternal consequences. And this is exactly what, what I see. It's exactly what we can see in the characters that we've chosen today. You see, there's a thief on the left of Jesus, and there's a thief on the right of Jesus. I want you to see that picture in your mind. Criminal, Jesus, criminal. Do you see it? Have you ever wondered why there were just two crosses next to Christ? Why weren't there six or seven or eight or nine or ten? If you, if you look at Roman history, they had mass crucifixions. Why were there just two? And have you ever wondered why Jesus was in the middle? Why wasn't he on the far left or the far right? Could it be this? Could it be that those two criminals on the hill symbolize one of God's greatest gifts? And that's the gift of choice. You see, to me, those criminals have so much in common. I mean, they were convicted by the same system, condemned to the same death, surrounded by the same crowd, equally close to the same Jesus. And yet, listen to Matthew 27, 44. It says that both of them hurled insults at Jesus. Both of them did it, but only one chose to change. So listen to verse 40 again. What did that criminal say? Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Those words have gotten tons of attention all across history. It's called the prayer of the penitent thief. But have you wondered about the other guy? What happened to him? And why didn't Jesus try to persuade him too? Well, my answer to you is this, that he just gave him a choice. He gave that 
man on the cross a choice. And that's what he does for you. It's what he does for every single one of us. He allows us to choose. Friend, today, you have a choice. You see, sometimes God sends you thunder to stir you or encourage you to change, to, to make a choice. And there are many people right now, me included, that believe that's what the coronavirus might be. Maybe God's sending a thunderous, cataclysmic event because he wants to get your attention. Maybe he wants you to make a choice. Maybe he wants to awaken you spiritually. Sometimes God sends thunder to stir you to make a choice. But you know what? Secondly, sometimes God sends blessings to lure you to sustain your choice. Maybe recently you chose Christ, and this is causing you to lean on him even more. Maybe that's what this time is all about. But let me give you a third option. Sometimes God just sends silence, and he honors you by allowing you the freedom to choose. Did you, think, did you know this? I want you to think about it. That you get to choose where you're going to spend eternity. Nobody else can make that choice for you. You get to choose whether you're going to follow God or not. And, and I'll tell you, I think that's a great honor. It's an honor because in so many areas of your life, you don't get to choose. Look at us right now. Did you get to choose that you had to be confined to your home in a shelter in place? Did you get to choose whether you kept or lost your job? You see, that's the way life is. Let's think about some more general things. Did you get to choose your siblings? <laughs> Did you get to choose your parents? <laughs> How many of you chose whether your skin sunburned or suntanned? On a light side, I've said my whole life, if I could change one, th one thing about me, I would choose to be able to get a tan. Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great, though? Wouldn't it be great if you could pull up to the drive through of life and this could be your order? Hey, I'll take an order of good health and straight teeth. How about a side order of the ability to sing and supersize that fast metabolism? That would be great, right? But that's not how life works. You know that. When it came to your life on earth, most of the time you weren't given a voice and you certainly weren't given a vote. But here's the good news. Here is the great news. When it came to your life on earth, you weren't given a voice or a vote. But when it comes to your life after death, guess what? You get to choose. I think that's a pretty good deal, don't you? So let's go back to the criminal on the cross. The other one who repented. Let's talk about him. It's safe to say this morning that that guy made some bad choices in his life. He made some big-time mistakes. He, he chose the wrong crowd, wrong morals, wrong behavior. He was sentenced to die by crucifixion. Was his life a waste? No way. Not at all, because in the end, his bad choices were redeemed by one good saving choice. Now, you're watching this morning, and you say, hey, you know what, Pastor Danny? I'm kind of like that guy. There's a lot of you who have made bad choices. You've chosen the wrong crowd. You've chosen the wrong morals, the wrong behavior, the wrong life patterns, maybe the wrong career. And you look back on your life and you say, oh, if I could only make up for all those bad choices. And I'm here from God to tell you that you can. Because one good choice of Jesus the ultimate choice of all eternity, it can offset many bad choices on earth. You see, the choice is yours. How can two brothers be from the same mother? How can they grow up in the same home and one choose life and the other choose death? I don't know, but it happens. And I'm not sure, but they do. But now how could two men see the same Jesus, and one choose to mock him, and the other choose to pray to him. I don't know, but they did. You see, when one prayed, 
Jesus loved him enough to save him. And when the other prayed, Jesus loved him enough to let him. You see, he allowed him to choose. And he does the same for you. This morning, I want to ask you, what choice do you need to make? What decisions do you need to make in your life? What's God laid before you today that you need to consider? There's somebody watching me today and you know right now that you've never chosen Christ. You fought against it. You pushed back all your life. And in this crazy societal shutdown and upheaval, you realize that all the things that you trusted, they can't be trusted anymore. I want to ask you today, would you choose Jesus? Would you say, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom? Lord, would you forgive me of my sin? Would you heal me spiritually and make me whole? Do you realize there are thousands of people across our world they're choosing Jesus Christ right now because they're recognizing he's the rock upon which they can build their life. Would you choose him today? Just pray a prayer and say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I choose you. I give up my control of my life. Be my Savior and my Lord. Come into my life and be my Lord. If you choose to do that today, I want you to contact our church. I want you to let us know what what you've done so that we can help you begin to grow in your faith. Maybe you're here today and, and you're watching and you say, Pastor, it's time for me to recommit my life. Would you do that this morning from your home, from your car? Would you say, I know that I believe and am following Jesus, but I haven't been doing it very well. And this entire thing has caused me to reconsider Would you recommit your life to Christ? You have the choice. Today I pray that whatever God has laid on your heart, that you would say yes, that you would fall on your knees right where you are now and say, Lord, I give everything to you. It is such a joy to worship with you today. It's such a joy to preach God's word to you. This week, as we walk from this Palm Sunday through Holy Week, I want you to think about the waving of the palm branches. And then I want you to think about all that Christ has done for you. He gave his life for you. So let's choose to live for him. God bless you and thank you for being with us today. And all God's people said, Amen. Bye-bye.